Now then, let's say hello to tonight's guests. It's actors Ralph Little and Gaynor Faye. <laughs> Welcome both. Thank you. Good thank you. to see you, good to see you. Uh, we have to say thank you, Gaynor, because you made a lovely film for us. Looking at how your late mum, Kay Mella, a brilliant scriptwriter, had inspired a whole generation of female writers. Yeah. But that must feel really special for you as her daughter. Absolutely amazing, you know, to be able to um, fulfil her legacy going forwards. You know, she, she always supported, like, underrepresented writers, new writers, she championed them. And so for us to be able to carry that on and with the um, women in film and TV and we've done a few other, you know, um, campaigns and stuff with other writers, it's, it's just, it's wonderful, you know. A yeah. real privilege. Yeah. She gave so many people their star, and uh, actors and, and writers, as you say. And I mean, I grew up watching her stuff, you know, things like Fat Friends, Band of Gold. Ralph, I know you were a huge fan of her work, weren't you? Yeah, she's le she left a huge cult cultural footprint behind. It's, there's not many people can re reasonably claim to have done that. But like you say, you know, Fat Friends, Band of Gold, um, underrepresented um, sections of society, marginalised sections of society um, that were put on screen in her work, but also uh, off the screen, people were being brought through and encouraged to yeah. get into the industry and, and create the kind of art that she that she was known for. It's an incredible legacy. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's giving people a leg up, isn't it? Exactly. You know? But now you're bringing The Syndicate, yes. one of a big series that was on BBC. You're bringing yeah. it to the stage and you are going to direct it. I know, I know. Oh, okay, yeah, this oh. is massive. How did it come about? Um, well, you know, I was off work and wanted to get involved with directing and um, she was directing The Syndicate, which she was really excited to do. And we'd just done Band of Gold, the tour, and I took that on tour. I directed that on tour, um, like the resident director. And and she knew that she didn't want to go on tour with it. She wanted to direct it, and she was really excited to get it on its feet. And so I went, we did like some workshops with it. And um, and yeah, I, I just saw it come to life right from the start and, and right from this embryonic stage of the TV show. So I've been involved with it right from the day one. So it, it was, feels right then, it doesn't felt, it? It yeah. feels really right. And it's great that I've got the opportunity to carry it on and see her vision through to the stage. So there were four series on TV, yeah. and I think the show is based on the first. For anyone who hasn't seen it, refresh our memory of the story. Uh, well, it's about a group of um, supermarket workers who are living on the breadline and, um, yeah, and they, they form a syndicate. And there's all kind of all the different characters in there and they all have a reason to want to win the money. Um, they win the money and, well, maybe not all of them win the money. That's the whole premise. <laughs> and, um, yeah, and it's, it's about how people deal with winning an enormous amount of money. And um, a driver said to me, he said, it's not, it, money isn't the root of all evil, it's the actions people take when they win the money. Yeah. I think it's a real... Very revealing. Yeah, very it? revealing. Can be. <laughs> and so your co-star from Emmerdale yes. is in it as well. Yeah. You've got a lovely cast, actually, haven't you? We have. Uh, we've got Sam Giles, who has just got a funny bone. She's just a brilliant actress. And uh, I shared a dressing room with her and she used to make me howl with laughter. And so she's playing uh, Denise. So not Benice, Denise in this one. Right. <laughs> and then we've got Max George from The Wanted, Aww. who's playing Jamie. And it's one of his first stage productions, it isn't is, it? It is, yeah. He was in Glee on telly, but he really wanted to get into stage, um, you know, acting. So we auditioned him and he was just brilliant. Oh, so, God. yeah. And then we've got Brooke Vincent as well, who's gorgeous and um, I know her from When You Wish Upon a Star Charity. We've done a lot of work together. So nice. You're going to be on the road all over the UK but very importantly heading to your hometown of Leeds. It's going to be a big moment that isn't oh, it? Oh yeah. I mean obviously Leeds is my hometown and I've, I just champion it and my mum was huge huge patriot of the York, being from Yorkshire and, and Leeds and so we really hope that everyone gets behind it and comes and watches her last stage show you know it's, yeah. um, it's really important but Obviously, Yorkshire, Yorkshire folk are very good, good folk, <laughs> warm and lovely. So, yeah. They'll come out and support for like sure. Like the show. Yeah. Well, tickets for the syndicate are available now. They'll be sold out now in five minutes flat. <laughs> yeah. And you can catch all episodes from the series on iPlayer. Amazing. Now, in just a moment, we're going to be finding out what's in store for D.I. Neville in the new series of Death in Paradise. Ah, oh, that was brilliant, wasn't it? It does look like Paradise. It was like uh, watching Wish You Were You back in the <laughs> 90s. Very nice. Uh, now, we just saw some of the challenges the team faced whilst working in the sun, and we have got a question on that note. Oh, look now. My iPad is not up and running in here. Oh, You've got Trey's going. question there. From, yeah, well, it's from Trey, who says, how do you cope with the heat? 
Uh, with difficulty. It's hot. <laughs> it's really, really hot. And uh, I know, I, no, I say this every time, and no one's going to give me any sympathy. I don't expect too much, but um, it's not a, it's not a six month holiday. Like it, it, it gets hot, and it's it's tough working conditions sometimes. Especially some of us get to swan around in t-shirts and shorts and whatever. The guest cast have a great time, <laughs> but I, and Don Warrington, you saw there, he's got his commissioner's suit on, and I've got long trousers and a shirt and a tie and whatever. It's like, look, it it, it can get tough. It's really hot. Ralph. Sometimes. They have to. They have to dry my shins. The costume department. <laughs> so, has to dry my so shins. sweaty shins. Sweaty shins. I didn't know I sweated through my shins, but apparently I do. I don't think if you get hot enough. enough. Yeah. If I'm wearing dark, I've got a sweaty eyelids, if I'm apparently. wearing dark, pa dark um, costume pants, then we'll go. Sorry, we, we can't use that take, and the costume department has to run in with a hairdryer because what you want is heat from a hairdryer, <laughs> and they have to dry my shins because I get sweat marks on. Oh, it's a very, it's Aww. very degrading, if anything. I love you. You must be factor fifty after here. <laughs> I am. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's very tough. Very tough. <laughs> but the thing is, you're away, you know, we were just talking, and you said you were away for six months at a time. Yeah. You must miss home comfort, however beautiful it is. There is, there's a funny thing, once you're out there, you, you very quickly realise what you, what you didn't know you would miss. After you've been there a month or so for the first time, you realise what it is that you need to feel comfortable. Well, it's just silly things like, uh, for me, uh, brown sauce, oh. um, mm -hmm. uh, salad cream, uh, uh, baked beans, like these things that you just don't get out there or you have to source them. And there's, there becomes this sort of weird sort of slight barter system. It's like a black market amongst <laughs> the crew. Where it's like, listen, I've got half a box of tea bags. I'll switch at you for half a bottle of salad cream. And it's like, well, throw in two tins of beans and we've got a deal. Like it, it gets like a little bit like that. Yeah. And sometimes the guest cast who's coming out, you, there's no other job where uh, the guest, uh, somebody's been booked for a job, they'll go, Gaynor, would you like to come out and do it? And it'll be like, great. And then you'll get a call from the producer going, would you mind bringing uh, a box of, of tea bags out and, uh, and two bottles bags. of salad cream? Any like, day. Okay, sure. <laughs> so yeah, there's a little bit of that goes on. Yeah, nice. Gaynor, what's your essential when you're away filming? What do you always take with? Um, oh, well, um, this is a strange one, but I'm a Buddhist, so I've got a little um, Gohonzon, which is a scroll that I chant to. So that's my little, um, that would be my, what I take. Oh, me. that's sorry. That wouldn't be any good for you. See, well, it's a lot more philosophical than we were going to say tea bags. <laughs> <laughs> it's a lot more interesting it than is, our answers, yeah. isn't it? <laughs> Gosh, Gaina. There you go. You see. Yes, well done. Yes. Yeah, he knows it. So it's back on Sunday now. Then death in paradise. Yes. And we know there's a big crime. I mean, there always is, but this one's bigger. Yes. Than usual. We just saw a little bit of it. Yeah, we did. Yeah, I the worry. The commissioner, for one person. commissioner <laughs> takes a takes a bullet. Ooh. Yeah. And, oh. uh, and were you that... supposed to say that? Yes. <laughs> Fine. <And> that... <laughs> Don't Fine. worry, I checked. Fine. Um, and uh, and that um, and that is the that's the crime, and it has to get solved, and it's very 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 personal for um, obviously the whole of the crew, the whole of the team, and um, and they have to go and solve solve the mystery and hope that he makes it. Oh my gosh, poor commissioner. Yeah. Don't tell us that bit. Whether I know, whether I, I don't, I'm definitely not allowed to tell you if he makes it or not. Oh, well, here's, here's the thing, uh, I did it. <laughs> oh, wait, no, I'm not supposed to say that either. <laughs> but listen, I mean, we never know who's going to turn up. This is the thing about this show. One of the things the audience really love is the cameos. And yeah. I know that there's one coming up that has left you starstruck this time. Well, there's there's a couple of things to say to that. You saw in the VT earlier that Sean Maguire is, is in uh, episode one. And there's a lovely little tie in there because Sean was in the very, very first episode of Death in Paradise 13 years ago. And he's back playing the same character, um, which I'm slightly annoyed about because I'm the only person who's been in it twice before him. But whatever. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yes, uh, Hayley Mills is in episode two, and Hayley Mills is just uh, wow. sort of an idol of mine, is an absolute legitimate living legend, uh, Oscar winner. Um, she was in Whistle Down the Wind um, when she was a kid, which is one of the most, it's set exactly where I'm from in the Lancashire Hills. I used to watch it with my grandparents, it's a beautiful film. And she just came on set, just this extraordinary um, legend, fabulous actor, and was just the most professional, nicest, easygoing person. It was kind of, it was what you aspire to. She was, yeah. she was probably one of the few people I've ever actually been starstruck by, and I got oh, to do really. scenes with her. That was How cool. lovely. Ralph, loads of viewer questions coming in, so I want to shoot <laughs> this one at you. Uh, Kieran asks, will Neville ever get his happy ending? Okay, I'll just mentally change gear. Um, yes, uh, well, I don't know. I, I, I didn't change gear fast enough. I, 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 um, <laughs> 
Neville, I think what you mean is, will he find some sort of love? Well, um, I think that's what it means, yeah. yes. Um, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, Neville, um, uh, Neville, we join Neville at the start of this series. <laughs> At the start of this series, and he's very, um, he's very uh, emotionally bruised from what happened at the end of last oh, series, okay. and so he um, has to try and find love, and he has to be persuaded to believe in love again, which is a very profound sort of journey for him because when he first arrived on the island, uh, he was too sort of nervous to try and live a full life, and he's sort of back in the same place again emotionally. So maybe uh, Neville will get a happy ending. Good save, Ralph. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. Death in Paradise starts this Sunday, 9pm on BBC One, and you can watch the previous series on iPlayer. Right then, we have got some big news because on World Book Day this March, we'll have a special programme celebrating some of the finalists of the 500 Words competition at Buckingham Palace. It was a competition where primary school children from right across the UK wrote and submitted their own short stories. Yes, and we want to hear from you if you've been inspired by a book or story, perhaps something from your childhood or maybe a character or theme that stayed with you. Whatever your story, do get in touch. And if you're lucky, you might just feature on the show. Email us, theoneshow at bbc.co.uk. Oh, and that's it, isn't it? That's it. That's all we've got time for tonight. Thank you to our guests, Ralph and Gaynor. I will be back tomorrow with Richard Curtis and Joel Domit will be talking comic relief. Architect George Clark will be here. And, of course, Nikki will be in for Watchdog. Plus, Roman will be heading into the Apprentice boardroom for a chat with Lord Sugar ahead of the new series. Have a great evening. Bye. Bye. Bye.